feel the atmosphere here in Paris. Here we are at the headquarters of the Socialist Party, which is contending for the presidency. It's been one of the most fiercely contested elections in recent times. And the outcome in this, the world's fifth biggest economy, will shape the economic direction of all of Europe. The Socialist, Francois Hollande, has had a lead in the polls for months, but in the last few days, the race has tightened, with President Nicolas Sarkozy himself describing the contest as on a razor's edge. Our foreign affairs correspondent, Jonathan Rugman, has been following the campaign and has this report. Feeling the heat and fighting for his political life, Nicolas Sarkozy, with his wife Carla Bruni at his side, is hoping what he calls a silent majority will prove the pundits and the polls wrong. If he's right, he will have survived the worst French recession since the Second World War. Either that, or he'll go down as France's first one-term president in over 30 years. Outside this polling station, a crowd was chanting the president's name. But Sarkozy is liked and loathed in pretty much equal measure here. His talk not of the economy, but of curbing immigration, apparently riding to the rescue of his campaign. His comeback in the opinion polls has been remarkable, but now Nicolas Sarkozy will have to defy political gravity if he's going to get himself re-elected as president. Carla Bruni Sarkozy told me she was confident of victory, but her husband is up against a man making lots of promises, a man with no inconvenient record in government to test those promises against. That man is Francois Hollande, a socialist and self-styled Mr. Normal, who has shown that charisma isn't everything. He voted in what is usually a quiet backwater, his rural southern constituency of Carrez, with his partner Valérie Triavila, a journalist. And if he wins, he'll be France's first socialist president in 17 years. I am, I am confident, and I'm sure. Confident and sure, he said. He's claimed he will hire 60,000 teachers and lower the retirement age back down to 60. And he'll pour billions into the French economy, despite a Eurozone treaty ordering members to tighten their belts. Hollande is benefiting from France's backlash against austerity. He says he'll call Angela Merkel to discuss his plans if he triumphs tonight. And even if it turns out he can't keep all his promises, they may be good enough to get him elected. In a less well-off district of Paris, that backlash against austerity seems coupled with an intense dislike of Sarkozy himself. To avoid to have the Nicolas Sarkozy as a president. So vote against the president? Yes. Everybody knows that uh, this austerity policy cannot last anymore. And uh, European community have to, uh, to have a position, a clear position, about what are we going to do in the 10 next years. While in a richer area, the prospect of a Hollande presidency is met with horror. Oh, frightful. I don't even want to think about it. Why? Because he's a man of the Third Republic. He doesn't know that we are in the 21st century. He just doesn't know that. And disbelief that Hollande really has any money to spend. There's no money in the bank. There is a lot of problem with uh, unemployment. Uh, there is a lot of problem with everything. So I think it's gonna, not going to be the change with Hollande or Sarkozy. It's the same. We're going to win, Sarkozy's supporters chanted at him this morning. And what an extraordinary comeback it would be if he really pulls it off. Jonathan Rugman, Channel 4 News, Paris.